My name is Braxton Harrison. This is the Different Generations Podcast, and to this date, I still have not stolen a ball from a small child. It makes my head hurt to laugh so hard. <laughs> so you should definitely check out some of that other content, but like for yes. $10. <laughs> yeah. Um, are y'all familiar with the what's going on with Kanye right now? He's no. uh, He's been speaking out, right? I mean, yeah, he is. So uh, down some rabbit hole, I know um, he basically tweeted – let me pull it up. He he tweeted some pretty anti-Semitic things going down the, you know, anti-Semitic globalist hole, rabbit hole. What's anti-Semitic? So, <laughs> um, uh, anti-Semitic is racist against Jews. Ah. So remember, uh, someone said a per- particular word a couple weeks ago and, uh, that was anti. Said that, that was anti-Semitic. That was the word. What? That, that's uh, see. That, I think you you should at least know what anti-Semitic is to laugh at this uh, this so <laughs> sketch. My, well, yeah, but this this is this is uh. There's there's better. There's never been a better premise in my mind than Trump playing Hitler, and then ab living it ab living him into a good guy. That helps the United States win World War yeah, II. That's amazing. <laughs> like the premise of it is great because it trolls both sides of the aisle. It makes it's going to make Republicans mad because they're they're saying Trump is Hitler. It's going to make the liberals mad because he's literally standing there with a Nazi swastika on his arm, just cracking jokes. So, all right, what did he say? I want to see the tweet. Okay, I want to see his word. It's the uh, tweet's definitely gone, but let's see. So oh. they so Twitter removed the tweet for sure. Um, said Ye will go DEFCON three on Jewish people, uh, an apparent reference to DEFCON, the U.S. military defense readiness system. In the tweet, he used anti-Semitic tropes and said he could not be anti-Semitic because black people are also actually Jew also. So I don't know if you're familiar, but there's a whole black Israelite movement, and that's kind of besides the point. He's going down the, I don't know if you're familiar with, like, the globalist conspiracy that there are. M- most conspiracy theories go down to, always boil down to anti-Semitism and that Jews are controlling the the world and the entertainment industry and the government and the banks. And, uh, yeah, so Kanye's... I- so he's mad that, that that the Jewish people have all the money. What was the what, what was what? It, do we is there any picture of the actual tweet? Yeah, let me find it. But no, I'm saying like, what's he? What, he's like, mad. That's what I mean. I don't understand what so he's saying. He's it's a it's a conspiracy or it's a commonly held uh, conspiracy that is portrayed by certain media pundits, by Alex Jones, by anyone talking about globalism or a new world order. They talk about how Jews and George Soros control everything. Is George Soros a Jew? I don't know. I thought he was, I thought he like financed like Nazi. I thought he was, I thought he was, um, I thought he was a Nazi. I thought he was a Nazi sympathizer. Yeah. I think he Yeah, George Soros Open Society Foundation killed f- 500,000 Jews. So a billionaire ph- philanthropist was born Jewish. Yeah. So so there Kanye is going down the rabbit hole that a lot of Fox News viewers or Alex Jones viewers or uh other conspiracy people and anti-Semitic people go down. Well, which is, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't know anything about George Soros. Do you know anything about George Soros? Not really. So if you click on his Wikipedia that anybody could edit, the very first thing that comes up when you Google George Soros, not me, is that open society, um, which I think is his, 
is it not his um, um, foundation? Isn't that what Open Societies yeah. is? Yeah. So the Open Societies Foundation, but I I was under the impression that that Soros was some sort of yeah. Survived the Nazi occupied Hungary and moved to the United yeah, Kingdom in 1947. He, I don't. He's. I've never heard he was a Nazi sympathizer. Um, I, that, that's that's what. Uh, that's what the first thing on your deal see, said. His extensive mine. funding of political causes has made him a bugaboo of European nationalists. <clears throat> the New York Times reported that conspiracy theories about him have gone mainstream to nearly every corner of the Republican Party. Numerous American conservatives have promoted false claims that characterize Soros as a singularly dangerous puppet master behind many alleged global plots. Conspiracy theories targeting Soros, who is of Jewish descent, have often been described as anti-Semitic. That's basically what I'm talking about. Yeah, but well, what they're saying is because he is of Jewish descent and people don't like him, that they don't like Jews, which I don't think is true because... Well, I mean, the, the 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 guy is a is a billionaire, right? So you don't like billionaires, correct? Correct. So you don't like this guy because he's a billionaire, correct? Does that have anything to do with him being a Jew? No, but I'm not. I don't subscribe to these conspiracy theories. You're well, not, you don't have to dis- you, subscribe to right, but you're just taking one small thing. I'm taking one not, small thing, but uh, I don't have to subscribe to his. These people who have the conspiracies don't like him because he's a billionaire no, like, no that's not the no, no, they, they don't they don't like him because of his open societies foundation if you go back right. to to the very top deal the very top thing the conspiracy theories all revolve around that the open society foundation which whether or not you can look into it or not i don't know anything about it i know any i know nothing about it but 15 billion has been distributing representing 64 percent of his original fortune that is why they don't like him. Yeah, so that's super valid. I agree, but the just like right. at Cowboy Stadium when we were talking about anti-Semitic tropes, and we'll, I'm not that that doesn't have anything to do with him being a Jew. You you not liking billionaires? He's a billionaire, so you don't like him because he's a billionaire. Doesn't make you anti-Semitist. Just like people liking him, not liking him because he gave fifteen billion dollars to political opposition and 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 i think all of that is is public record now as far as what his motives are nobody knows what his motives is because he hasn't said what his motives are there you go so yes of course i agree with you that it's not anti-semitic to dislike billionaires or for well, any, anything like that when how, you go farther into the conspiracies that's where the anti do, do you know how he into. made his money though um do you know how he made his money? I don't. Uh, like I've I've heard about the conspiracy theory. It, I've never a, looked into it. Like I don't. A, I don't know anything about it. I don't know anything about him. Yeah, but George Soros, it, 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 finance it, conspiracy stuff, right? theorists I mean, or whatever, what, whatever you can call mm-hmm. them, conspiracy theories. They don't like where he put where he puts his money. They don't like um, the the um, you know it's like money in politics, right? They don't like the candidates that he supports. They don't like the platforms that they stand for. And I think it's all, you know, I think he's donated $15 billion financing different different political, uh, different politicians. They don't like that. I, it is, I don't really care about it. doesn't matter to me. Um, but he made his money trading Forex. So oh, you, yeah. do, do you know what trading Forex is? Like, it, mm-hmm. it really is a, as far as, um, um, you know, what I would – conspiracy theory if we're going to start one i would guess most of his political um nonsense is so he can make more money trading um currencies you know that makes sense like i mean if you're buying politicians and you're and you make money trading currencies you might have a you might have anyone else inside on what the dollar is going to do yeah you might you might need to know um exactly how this stuff's going to play out so you know uh, being a puppet master with uh, with thirty two billion dollars um, seems highly unlikely because um, you know thirty two billion just ain't that much money and yeah. and, and mm-hmm. it's, real- it's the brain broken mm-hmm. brain rottedness of people who cannot just accept that this level of wealth or what they actually don't like is billionaires because they've been fed that 
they want to be billionaires. So they have to attribute it to aliens or, you know, Jews coming from a different. What? Uh, yeah, that's what I'm that's what the conspiracy theories come down to. Is. But do you realize do you, do you realize that nobody do you know what he's talking about? I don't. I don't know. I have no idea what you're talking about. And I'm and I hang out in very conservative circles. I've never heard heard any of them mention any of this stuff. The the George Soros stuff that you see on Fox News and you see on on uh, you know any form of social media or anything like that has to do with the open whatever foundation it is donating money to different different political people that then um, do things that don't make a lot of sense. It, I mean, it just doesn't make a lot of fucking sense. Like if you've, if, if his foundation and they, they figured it out. I mean, I knew this a long time ago. I lived in a, I lived in a County, um, in Texas and I'm not going to mention the County, but the guy that ran that County was worth about $33 million. And they talk about it and they, and they say, okay, well, you know, big fish, small pond. Eventually the big fish eats all the bait fish and they don't have any food and he dies. And, and that really is the big fish, small pond theory. Well, a county, it, like if you want to talk about running something, if you're in a county in Texas, if you're in a county, I mean, Loving County is a great example. What does it got? 80 people that live there. Okay. How much money does it take to run the county of, in Loving County if there's only 80 people? A whole bunch. It don't take a bunch of money, but there's one dude out there. If you go Google Loving County, there's a dude out there that murders people, gets away with it, and everything else. He's got a bunch of stank around him because he runs that county. He gets to do whatever he wants. Why does he get to do whatever he wants in Loving County? He's got that power. But why? There's no one else to come in and take it out? No, because the simple way that, that um, the justice system is set up is very, 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 very simple. The... DA, the district attorney mm -hmm. in that county, not only gets to choose who he prosecutes, okay? So the DA chooses, they, they present a case, they come to him and they say, hey, we got this case. You can prosecute this case um, right now. And he says, well, I don't really think there's enough evidence to convict, so I don't want to prosecute the case. What happens to it? I don't know. It gets kicked to a grand jury. What's the grand jury? Besides uh, what happens to him? Who picks the grand jury? The lawyers? Look it up. Just look at I mean, the seat. people in that county of 80 are going to be on that grand jury. Who picks the grand jury? Who 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 picks the grand jury in a county? So the, the, the DA has declined to prosecute. You don't think there's mm -hmm. enough evidence to get a conviction. He The police did all the police work they could do. They have great evidence. But he says, nope, I don't think I can get a conviction. I'm not going to prosecute. It goes to a grand jury. Who picks the grand jury? I don't know. Go look it up. Okay. Now the grand jury, the grand jury then says, nope, we're going to no bill this guy. What happens then? Who can bring charges from there? Uh, I don't know. No one because for the same crime, they can, somebody can bring those charges. If there's new evidence or nope, something, no, no, same evidence, but they will not get to present that to so the judge picks the grand jury. Which judge? Judge the county. A grand jury. A, a grand jury consists of twelve Tarrant County citizens selected by a district judge. Who's the district judge? How is the district judge? Who? What is a district judge in Texas? I don't know how many. They're over a couple counties. They can be in the smaller counties. They can. So they're be. slightly bigger than a yeah county judge. Yeah, they're but 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 how do they get picked? They're elected. They're elected. Okay, so you got a district judge, you got a DA, you got a grand jury. Okay, what do you need to control to control the county? The judge, the DA, and the judge. If you've got the district judge and the DA, and they say they no bill you, the only way you can get it to a higher level is if the state decides to pick up the charges. The state attorneys, right? Now, if it's a federal crime, the the the, mm -hmm. the federal, but there, th that's even another layer up. So, it doesn't take much. Now, in in a bigger county like like um, Dallas County, the, there's going to be the city's going to have their own prosecuting attorney and DA and all that, and then there's going to be the county DA. You got different layers, right? But in a small county, in a small county, 
You can control it just by controlling the DA and the judge. If you get those two people elected, you don't have to do anything else. Like, you don't have you don't have to control the state. You can spend a little bit of money in these elections, a little bit of money in these elections to get these people elected. Who's running for for district judge? Well, you 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 moved out of Limestone County, but you could probably name at least one person that's running for an office in Limestone County or someplace else just by driving by the signs on the road. Mm-hmm. Can you do you think you can? No. Well, you don't read the signs on the side of the road, but you know, um, Amy, um, I don't even know her last name, but she's top of mind recognition. Uh, I, I recognize her. She's on my top of mind. She won the runoff, I believe. And um, she had all of her signs everywhere. She probably bought $30,000 worth of signs, $15,000 worth of labor, forty five grand. She sewed up a district judge. Um, it's Amy... Um, and it's in Limestone County. Um, anyways, doesn't matter. For for forty five grand, she sewed up. She sewed up the district judge nomination in a Republican county. Amy Ward, there she is. Um, and now she's going to be in the main main election. And I think they cover three counties there. But but think think about think about how little money that is to a billionaire. And why would a billionaire not pay that? Well, give a damn about a district judge race in rural parts of the country. So all they're saying with Soros and the conspiracy theory is, why does he care about these small popcorn elections? Well, it's very clear why he cares about these small popcorn elections. It's drop in the bucket. It's a drop in the bucket and you get control, whatever you get, you now influence how Mm -hmm. that county is going to be governed. Whether you agree with it or disagree with it is irrelevant. It's easy to control. Well, yeah, right or wrong aside, like it, it's smart and it's easy to do, it seems like, if you have yeah. that sort of money. So that's that's where the criticism comes from. It's mm-hmm. not because, you know, he's donating to congressmen or or, um, or uh, any of that. It's because he's wading into these tiny um, little elections that it doesn't take a lot of money. I mean, if you give somebody a million dollar, a million dollar campaign budget in a in, – in a, small election like that i mean they can dominate they can cover the airwaves uh they'll be on the top of mind of everybody out there um let's and, control a county do what let's let's do this it, there's <laughs> put, i mean put away a fund <laughs> you you yeah but but there's no like what do you win hill county maybe but what do you what do you win though it's i don't know it's fun. like like i think like, part of that is you have to have some motive you have to want something from it surely if if you're willing to do it yeah, Otherwise, wanna, what's the gain? You want to build something, you want to do something, you want to just drive 150 miles an hour everywhere you go or something. Yeah, that, that's, like, there's got to be some gain. That That's the small person. Uh-huh. So what's the motive of a billionaire that lives in a different country? Who knows? Exactly. That's <laughs> that. So that's where the conspiracy theories come in. They're, they're opining about why he's involved in these small mm-hmm. elections. It's not, it's not that he's not involved in these small elections. He is 100% involved in these small elections. And and I'm not, you know, it's like the conspiracy theory comes into why would somebody care about that? Well, to me, if I'm trading Forex and I can cause, um, I you know, if if the, the candidates that I support, the candidates that I support are for cashless bail and all this, all this nonsense, just complete and other nonsense that – whether no matter which side of the aisle you can on, you can look at the stats and be like, I don't know if this is working out, right? I don't yeah. think this is good policy. When I if I allow people to rob a Walgreens every day and they don't have to go to jail, eventually there's not going to be a Walgreens in that neighborhood. That's just life. It, it could be a convenience store. It could be a grocery store. So you end up with food deserts. You end up with all of this nonsense because there is no no inverse reaction. There is no there's no there's no consequences for these actions. There's no there's no downside mm-hmm. to doing these crimes. I mean, you just had it in Dallas County. Would they say they're not going to prosecute? Uh, Seven hundred fifty dollars worth of theft is now legal in Dallas County. Well, that's that's fucking crazy. It's crazy to me that somebody could walk up to Braxton jaw jack him take 750 dollars and the insult and the robbery are of 
no consequence to the person who does it. I mean, how much money could you make in a day? Pretty good living, seven fifty a day. <laughs> like, if you all you had to do is just knock people out and take their wallet. Like, and there's no consequence. Like, w- if you're the baddest dude on the block, you just won. You just hit the lottery. You now got a license to steal without consequence. The police know, they then know, there's no point in arresting this person because the county attorney isn't going to enforce the law, right? The legislators or the the city council or whoever writes the municipal laws, I think it's city council, they write the laws, they put them in place, and the people that are in charge of enforcing them do selective enforcing. It doesn't matter anymore. It's all over with. Like, it just breaks down. It just becomes a, 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 a hierarchy of who the baddest motherfucker is. And that's never a good place to live. I promise you. If whoever if if whoever the baddest motherfucker is gets to pick the rules about how this is, you know, what's right and what's wrong, you're not going to like those situations, right? That's what got Putin in power. Putin just happens to be the baddest motherfucker over there for his peer group at the time and now he has the power and the henchmen that will Hit your off button if you disagree with him. Is that do, does anybody here want to trade places and go live in Russia? You know what I mean. Like, mm-hmm. do you want to, Braxton? You want to go over to Russia? I don't. That's what happens when you don't have a justice system that that applies the laws. Now, it's happening on every level. I mean, you got marijuana. Uh, the the federal government not enforcing marijuana laws in, in certain states. Um, if it is a state's right issue, the federal government should have the balls to make it a state's right issue to pass a law that says, hey, this is state by state now. Enjoy yourselves. You know what I mean? Rather than just choosing not to enforce laws in Colorado and um, I mean, what? It's probably a majority of states now. Several. Yeah, I don't I, I can't think of all of them. What did it, you see? Well, yeah, but now how are you going to go enforce any other law? Like mm-hmm. you're going to you're going to you're not going to enforce well, it's these a slippery laws. slope. It's like, well, if you're not going to enforce that, then what, you know. Like, why are you enforcing laws or, or hate crime laws or 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 uh, or tax laws or or what what else does the federal government control? Um, they don't they don't dive into much. I mean, I guess kidnapping is always a federal issue mm-hmm. because they can cross state lines. Uh, bank robberies. Um, I mean, they don't they don't enforce a lot of laws federally. Um, it's not like they have a police force out here. finance laws finance laws i mean how are you going to enforce any of those laws just look at it and go well you you know yeah you're 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 getting me for insider trading or whatever it is um but the guy right next to me has made 10 million dollars selling weed this year and you don't you're not going to go get him you know what i mean like he made his money illegally too like what why why is mine bad and his good it's, it's a weird it's a weird thing you get what I mean like mm-hmm. it's just weird um it's just weird I don't I don't know I, 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 I but yeah I as far as conspiracy theories with George Soros I don't I don't know um what's correct and not correct I don't think disliking George Soros since I didn't know he was Jewish till just now and the only thing I ever heard about him was that he somehow was tied to uh, the Nazis. And that's probably a conspiracy theory, right there. I don't. I hadn't heard anything else about him. I mean, can we read? Can we read whatever that that conspiracy theory is about him in Nazi uh, in Nazi Germany and how he survived it? There's another guy that I do like that survived a concentration camp, but I can't remember his name. He's a big developer. Um, yeah. So, following a 98 60 Minutes interview in which Soros related his experiences when at age 13. Nazis occupied his native Hungary. Right-wing figures, such as all these dudes, promulgated the false conspiracy theory, which has been described as anti-Semitic, that Soros was a Nazi collaborator who turned in other Jews and stole their property during the occupation. Yeah, nobody... So that's I, that one. I mean, we could go watch the 60-minute interview and, and, and decide for ourselves. I don't, I, you know, I don't have to take uh, Glenn Beck or any of these people's words for what happened there. You know what I mean? I don't consume any of their content anyways. Um, you know, the, the, the news is always an interesting place. And as long as they source their material, um, it's pretty easy to find and pretty easy to, 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 to form your own opinion. So, Oh, um, 
Kanye's out here hating Jews, though. Is that what we're supposed to? Yeah, yeah. So the, that's the, the people are very valid to dislike George Soros. Um, it's it's a larger conspiracy that goes into um, like. There's a word for it. Uh, so, so what you're saying, like, so some somehow it was made. You you said the other day, whenever I used Jew as a um, verb instead of a noun, you said it was a Hitler based um, well, conspiracy theory. No, I said that just to be inflammatory. I mean, I just said that for the entertainment. I mean, it. it I said specific words where it's a ancient anti-semitic trope okay. that hitler used okay so i i just wanted to sound but you know yeah, yeah which no. is all true it is a very old anti-semitic trope that was used by the the there is a history of anti-semitism that not only like that Hitler adopted, but that has reemerged in alt right and neo Nazi. Well, that that Jewish circles, people so. are are misers is what it said whenever you whenever you put in to look up for the definition, which means cheap. It's misers Wait, mean cheap. What? I don't know what that word is. Misers. Say, say what you just misers. What about misers? That Jewish people are misers. That they're that they're cheap. Yeah, that's the that's the, the that's the that's that, the stereotype. Yeah, so so there's the, the stereotype is that that Jewish people are cheap. Now, I I don't have a lot of experience um, with the with the Jewish religion. Uh, I, I matter of fact, I'm confused over where, whether uh, Jew is a religion, a race, a. So it's both. Being being Jewish is prescribed as if your if your mother is Jewish, you're Jewish. It's an ethnic group yeah there's sephardic jews and ashkenazi jews so totally there's secular jews that it's a tradition and like a culture could that i, has could I nothing join that whether or not you are religiously active doesn't matter and okay. then there are those who practice judaism in a religious sense could you can't it's a really tough uh you have to be really dedicated to convert yeah. Um, so could I could I could I become could I could I switch my religion to Jewish? You you can. It's just a lot of uh, work. A lot you more work with a rabbi and go to classes. It takes years, I think, because um, people do it, you know, to when they get married or if they want to. But it's yeah. not as easy as. Like, so it's easier to get out of than it is to get into. Yeah, I mean. So like, if I'm if I'm a practicing if I'm. Uh, practicing the Jewish religion, and I don't want to be Jewish anymore. I just quit, and yeah, they, there's. And I'm a no lot longer of, in the religion, but I'm still. But I'm still. You'll still be a Jew by blood, like I mean, if your mom's Jewish, uh, like you're technically Jewish, and there's a lot of Reform Jews who, like, who will so ascribe to certain cultural elements of it, but you know, don't believe the religious stuff is it harder to quit uh being what's the religion judaism 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 is it harder to quit judaism is than uh it is to quit scientology which one's harder to quit <laughs> i'd say scientology because i can i can try i can go from baptist to methodist right now i just say no i'm methodist you need to say it i know and i don't even know the difference in the belief i know baptist can't dance i don't know what that's why. That's it. That's why I'm no longer Baptist. I want to be Methodist so mm -hmm. I can shake this ass. <laughs> so, so what? I, what I really would like. So within all of that, within all of that, since since uh, the um, trope, this is this is the part that I think is is kind of uh, kind of funny. So Hollywood, whatever Hollywood was or is, um, there's a there's a gentleman. He bought uh, the MGM. Oh, uh, what the hell's his name? Uh, Kirk. Oh, man. Kirkorian? Yes, that is it. There he is. That's my guy. What's his What's his religion or what's his, what's his uh, ethnicity? 
does it say? It's American. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And so yeah, Kerkorian's an Armenian name. Yeah. So what does that mean? Armenian. He's like he's all right. So, from so yeah. So this cat right here. Have you ever read his book? No. So he there's a book called The Gambler, and this this dude is un is it unbelievable. He has an unbelievable story. Absolute unbelievable story. Uh, I didn't realize he died in 2015. I didn't know he lived that long. Um, but you, you can, you can, um, yeah, I mean, he basically built Las Vegas. Okay. But in his book, in his book, way back in the day, way back in the day, um, and it might say something about this in here. Um, there's a, there's a lot of talk about how, the I don't know if it's the Jewish religion or the Jewish Jewish people or whatever um, controlled a lot of the money and financing for the things that he was trying to do. So he would have to go see them for money. He would have to go um, get and borrow money from um, different Jewish families to build his business. And um, he was he was tied in. He was rumored to be involved in the mafia. This guy was. He never was involved in the mafia, but he was rumored to be tied in with the mafia because of the industry he got into, which was uh, casinos. But he built um, an airline. I don't know which. It'll, it'll say there which airline he built. But he built the airline. His original airline would fly from, from L.A. to Vegas. He realized Vegas was going to be a place that, that people in California like to go. So he took money. He, at 13 years old, he started flying uh, missions to he would they would build planes in Canada and he would fly them to um, an island I guess he has Scotland right there um, and then ride a, b- a boat back and then fly another plane he made sixty grand doing that and he started his airline company with planes that they abandoned on Hawaii so he went to Hawaii bought these planes went to Hawaii and flew them back to the United States even though. He didn't have enough fuel to fly him back to the United States because that was what he did during World War II. He, he took planes to Scotland and he started the Trans-American wow. Corporation, which flew from Las Vegas or from L.A. to Las Vegas. And he grew it into a billion dollar company. He eventually bought the MGM um, brand. Um, I think he owner financed it and then he sold it. He did sell it owner finance to the owner of CNN, who's a Turner's. Yeah. Mm hmm. And hold up, eighty acres for nine sixty, nine hundred sixty dollars, or nine hundred sixty thousand dollars. Yeah, nine sixty thousand. Yeah, built Caesar's Palace. He built yeah no he, he and the MGM and the MGM burnt down. He personally paid when when the MGM the original MGM uh, casino burnt down. He he paid for all the the funerals of like the eighty people that died and paid their families. You know, and and the lawyers didn't want him to do it, but he bought he bought um, MGM the studio simply because he knew the Wizard of Oz and all the movies. Eventually, they would have it where they could be played in home, and he knew that the value was there, and that he was going to sell a lot of cassette tapes or tapes or videos or whatever it was whenever they got it to where they could play at home. He knew that, so he bought the MGM studios based on their portfolio of work that they had already done. I mean, it's a, it's a fascinating story, but in the story, in the story, he had two options. He could go to the mafia to finance, or he could go to the Jewish people for finance. And he went to the Jewish people for finance to build this and built Vegas. Yes. And, and, and built Vegas. So this is what I know about him, right? This is what, this is, this is my only insight into the conspiracy theory that, um, uh, the Jewish people run um, the money world or whatever it is. I don't know that this guy started that theory. You know what I mean? I don't know that he started it. I don't I don't know that he was like, hey, let me be racist and throw this. Make sure you include this in my book. You know what I mean? That I didn't get my money from the mafia. I got it from the Jewish people. It was just the options that he had at that time. You get what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like now what, why that is or isn't, I don't know. Now he did, he was a good tennis player, played tennis. Um, the reason why there's a lot of tennis out there, he played tennis, I think all the way up till he died. 
And uh, he married a couple of professional tennis playing ladies and was married to a much younger one that broke him at the end of his life. Dang. Broke him? Made him go broke. Dang. She, um, she made him spend all of his money. I mean, I'm, and I'm rattling off a lot of stuff and probably got a little yeah, bit of I, it wrong. Yeah, I know about this dude uh, just from MGM and that story. I did not know the airline story. Yeah, he got he made all of his money um, well, starting an airline. He charged 1000 per flight or per... Yeah, he got paid 1000 for a flight to fly from Canada to, um, to uh, um, Scotland. Scotland. And, he, at, well, I don't think he started doing that at 13. I think he started flying when he was 13. I think he was um, flying um, crop dusters at 13. And I think he was 15 or 16 when he started doing these flights because he wasn't old enough to actually join the Army. Rather than taking the safer Montreal, Labrador, Greenland, Iceland, Scotland route, although going further north could mean the wings icing and the planes crashing, Kerkorian preferred the direct Iceland wave route, which, which blew, the, blew planes. the planes at jet yep. speed to Europe. So he would he would just he would get the uh, a tailwind and it would blow him in, and that's the only reason why he wouldn't run out of fuel. And they had a an extra fuel they mounted an extra fuel tank in the cabin with him, so he's sitting on a fuel tank to be able to make this flight. And and so that's how he knew that's how he knew that he could that he could do this um, this flight from Hawaii to uh, mainland California. To start his deal. Now, I'm only talking about this dude because I I I I didn't know what ethnic group he would belong to. I just know in his book, you know, he said that's where he got his money. That's where he got his money, and and it was a big deal because then they did all these mafia investigations. They tried to tie him to the mafia forever. They they wanted him to be involved with the mafia, but he didn't. He had rich Jewish friends. Um, that financed them and helped finance them or went in on with the deals. And so I just assumed with the, that last name that he was um, Jewish. That might be that might be a little racist, but I don't know. Is it? No, Krikorian is definitely Armenian. Um, yeah. Armenians, I mean, there are probably Jews in Armenia, but, but it's not. Um, what's that? That's East Europe? Southeast Europe? Yeah. yeah. And, and, and his big competitor. There's a lot of Armenians in L.A., or a dude that had a parallel life to him was that crazy guy that lived in a hotel in Las Vegas. Um, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio played him, played him in a movie. Um, Who? Say that again. He, a guy, his main okay, competitor. Yeah, south of Georgia. That's what I was thinking. His main competitor. Um, Near Turkey. So I guess, yeah, not. It's not. Middle East ish. Yeah. yeah. I said Southeast. Yeah, it's Southeast. Yeah, his, uh, his main competitor was. Um, Shit. Uh, what's the guy that tried to build the big planes? Hughes. Hughes. Um, Baker Hughes. The name in Baker Hughes um, is this guy. Uh, no, no, no. Baker Hughes is the oil company now. But um, Hughes Christensen. Um, who? The, the, y'all don't know who Hughes, which Hughes I'm talking about? Had an had no. a a, uh, uh, oil company, a plane company, and built casinos. In Las Vegas. Howard, Howard Hughes. Hughes. Howard Hughes, a, a revolutionary recluse. He 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 was all he Kikorian hated being compared to Howard Hughes. Um hated. Howard doing better than him? No, nah, Hughes Hughes had way more money. Way more money than Kikorian. But he went crazy and Moved into a the oh, penthouse suite of a hotel, yeah, 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 and just and just was a recluse, but he was like pulling strings from this penthouse. <laughs> so he tried to build this gigantic plane. You've never seen the movie with uh, with with um, Leonardo DiCaprio? Mm-mm. Jeez, it's go- it's so good because he because he built this gigantic uh, gigantic plane. The aviator, right? Yes, he builds this gigantic plane and flies it himself. And anyways, it, it, it never, I mean, he, he would just spend money trying to develop planes and I don't know what his airline was named, but he, he made money drilling oil, um, which is where the name, the, the Hughes name and Baker Hughes came from. Baker Hughes is, um, Hughes Christensen was bought out by Baker Hughes. I don't know what Baker was anyways, doesn't matter. 
um, made money in oil, made money in, in, in airlines, and made money in casinos, built a lot of Las Vegas. He built the half of Las Vegas that Kikorian didn't build, and um, then the Mafia. The Mafia was out there, but the Mafia didn't have – I mean, the Mafia had a, a, um, a lot to do with Vegas at the beginning, like at its like 1910 inception. You know, they found it like 1920s, 1930s during Prohibition. Um, once they started building the Hoover Dam, they were out there thick. And they had a lot of the smaller casinos. I think the Flamingo, I think some of those. But um, Howard Hughes and Kurt Kerkorian uh, came in and, and, and corporatized um, Las Vegas, essentially, and, uh, and pushed the mafia out. And now you got, I don't know, um, heck, Steve Wynn. I don't know any the, – I think the, he's the last of the OGs. Steve Wynn was brought up in Kerkorian's book. Um, he was the the new uh, the newcomer on the block, and I I think Trump was mentioned in there a little bit too. But Trump um, lost his gaming license before he ever got to got to open up a casino in Vegas. He lost his gaming license. Um, and so he just got the hotel, right? He just got the hotel. He never it, Trump never could get a gaming license in Nevada. Um, he I don't I don't know that for be a fact. Don't sue me, Trump, but. Pretty sure he couldn't get a gaming license in Nevada, and that's why his hotel is just a hotel. Um, we brought up the Armenia map. I wanted to do this last week. I think we were talking about the, I think it was either Spoon or you brought up like how big countries actually are. Yes. Like compared to the map. The Spoon's way been on it. that this last week Spoon and a half. He's been, been like, oh, you know, maps, they don't, they don't really <laughs> show. Spoon's so mad at maps right I, now. It's like in schools, they don't teach it right. I wish he was here. I really wanted to bring this up. I just didn't have a chance but yeah this website you can like drag around countries and it'll show you the relative size what so like you can fit the u.s india and china inside africa africa is a big bitch huge big old fat girl well what about south america just just drag around u.s real slow around everywhere Ooh, <laughs> so that's that's nice that's south america is much bigger than i thought oh yeah <laughs> Oh. Even that part down there is bigger. Yeah, that's a Argentina is a. It's the width country. of Texas down there. Let's see much. how it looks at Australia. Yeah, we oh, we beat uh, them. Yeah, Australia is pretty big though. It's I mean, the size of the U.S. Yeah. <laughs> I thought Texas for some reason was bigger than all these places. It's the biggest state. It is big. It's bigger than a lot yeah, of. Like Texas is like about the size of. I mean, it, Texas but obviously Euro- European kicks countries. Europe. Like, look, Texas like. Bigger than Spain. Yeah. So European countries, Texas, he's got dominates. Mm-hmm. How's Greenland look? Because it always looks big. Yeah, Greenland does look big. Oh. Whoa. <laughs> Greenland's tiny. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> look at look at uh look at Michigan, how funny it looks once it gets distorted. <laughs> once it gets distorted. It's like a finger in the butt coming slowly. It's like, whoa. Look at this mitten coming for you. Well, is it, okay, so is Russia as big as it seems? Nah, that was what Spoon was yelling about. Nope. He was like, Spoon, Russia's tiny. And then China is supposedly what the heck? massive. China did shrink. <laughs> no, I mean. It's the same size. But look, look, China and India both have over a billion people in them. And look. Yeah, but. Um, We've got 330 we, or something. Yeah, 330. We had a guy yelling at us the, uh, yesterday about China's ability to get ships out of whatever port. Apparently, they can only do it twice a year. I have no idea if any of that's true or not. Aircraft carriers, you said. Aircraft carriers, yeah. They said they don't have – their body of water that they have is terrible for, you know – Launching hmm. aircraft carriers. Launch, getting aircraft carriers out of – We've got a much better coastline. Yeah. Said, said if we wanted to shut down their ability to get ships into the ocean, we could do it with, like, two shots, and they could no longer <laughs> – they can no longer deploy their fleet of uh, <laughs> of uh, their navy. Their navy would it's be pretty just crippling. Up. I have no idea if that's true or not. Yeah, I have yeah, no I don't idea. Know. I mean, I, I don't, even if it, I googled if it, it, is that's interesting, but I don't know. But if I googled it and read it, I still wouldn't believe it. You know what I mean? Until I'm yeah. in China in three foot water, going, you know what? An aircraft carrier won't come through here. <laughs> <laughs> I won't believe it. So it's seasonal. How's a how we look against Canada then? Yeah. So maps just really do lie. And Spoon, maps just do lie. Drag us over Canada. Oh, yeah, we dominate Canada. I, see, I thought Canada was a whole lot bigger. Right? I thought Canada was huge. Let's look at us over over um, Alaska. 
Let's see how we're doing with Alaska. Texas is, like, slightly smaller. Yeah, but Alaska looks massive in that map. Jesus. It's all a chunk. So they struggled with the globe is what it looks like. Yeah. I, well, I, I guess it's given, what do you mean? It's hard to show proportions, I guess. No, a globe is a lot more accurate. A flat map, you can't put you can't project a round thing onto a flat map without distortion, right? I mean. Oh. So globes are way more accurate um, cuz that's the shape of the earth I, supposedly, well, supposedly. I, yeah, I was about to go the complete opposite direction. I was about to say I guess them flat earthers are onto something, but <laughs> turns out they're still just retarded. Oh, we can't say that. They're still just not smart. Cha- challenged. <laughs> they're still mentally challenged that flat earthers i'm sorry um what what were you talking about with the football thing i was trying to figure that out oh yeah there's a guy um there's a video up on espn's um facebook Uh, describe it uh adams i don't know his first name plays for the for the raiders Pushed a camera guy down or something. Oh yeah. And the angle, of course, they put an angle up where it looks like he's just, just mows down a dude. And um, yeah, that's the angle that it looks like he mowed him down. Because all you see is him walking. All you see him is walking, and he just shoves a guy. But when you see it from the reverse angle, you realize homie's walking with his head down. See his head's down. And he looks up, and he's about to run into a dude, and he extends his arms. It, I mean, it's really a nothing. Um, he's walking with his head down, and then he looks up, and then there's a dude in front of him that so wasn't in front. So the of other him. angle shows that that guy's walking in front of them. Well, trying to run in front of him, trying to run across in front of him. So it's just like, I mean, you're a football player. Um, something flashes in front of you. I don't. I think. I think it's a pretty natural reaction to. You know, extend arms, but if you get the if they show the the one from behind, you'll you'll see a lot clearer what <laughs> other angle. <laughs> yeah, that's it right there. <laughs> that worked. <laughs> I don't, you know, I just don't think it doesn't look near as bad. It doesn't look near side. as bad from that angle. He's just walking, got his head down. A dude flashes. See that? It looks like they run into each other. It does, and it's like he just kind of mm-hmm. like he just extends, extends his arms just a little bit. You know, I mean <laughs> it. I, you know, I mean that dude's probably a really strong guy. He's fucking huge. Um, he's walking. He's got his head down. Flashes. I mean, even if he hadn't extended his arms, he's going to crush that guy. <laughs> like uh-huh. that dude's going flying regardless if he gets hit with the, a helmet. The thing is the push. Yes. Plus, yeah, but, but well, it, it, even if that's instinctual, then you go and help the dude up. Like, oh, my God. Right. Yeah, he should have helped him up. Hey, he man, you like, walked in front of me. Sorry about that. I, I wouldn't mean, even think in. Let me help ba- you. This angle doesn't seem as bad, but it seems like he was pissed about something. And yes. Letting All, it out. Yes. No, no. But, but y'all, you, another thing. Context always matters in these things. Um, go, to the, go, to the, go to the Raiders walking off the field at halftime. Put, it, put in Raiders leaving field halftime. Um. And then, you know, when you get a full picture, you realize, you know, not everybody has your best intentions at heart. Homie, when you're walking with your head down, you're frustrated. Yeah, play that one right there. Look at, look at it. Look at all the stuff raining down on them. Oh. Yeah. So they're getting pelted by beer cans and beer bottles and. Some of them throw them back at them. Got you. Good context, Corey. Well, this is at halftime. The other one's after the game. But but you don't – when your head's down, you have no idea why somebody would – that all of a sudden appears. Mm-hmm. Yeah, dude, have, it could be someone who's trying to yeah, fuck you up. Yeah, you know, they don't, I don't know who has my best interest at heart right there. I'm yeah. frustrated. You know, it's a grown man sport. You no, know, should he have pushed the guy? Probably not. But I don't. I don't think he was doing it. In malice, I think. Yeah, I think just mistake. No, I agree with that. I think it. I don't think it's like maybe could have handled it better, but I also understand it. I'm just saying it's like, yeah. When that happens, you're like, oh, hey, guy, I'm I'm sorry about that. Let me help you out. 
Definitely. But I, I, I didn't got, see you coming. You, you startled me. Like, that's legitimate. Yeah. I, My head's down. All of a sudden, you're walking in front of me, you know. But at the same time, I just lost a football game. You're on the ground. I've I've been hit with beer cans coming off the field. I was just trying. You know what I mean? Like, I'm... I might not help him up, and I and I wouldn't feel bad about it. All I'm saying is, they've they've made this a a huge deal, and this is why ESPN sucks. This is why ESPN is fucking terrible. How does ESPN make it a majority of its money? It's the mouse. People looking at it. Yeah, yeah. But what what are, what are the, what do people still watch? The games. Uh, Stephen uh, A. Smith. Nah. Well, Stephen A. Smith maybe, but Super I mean, Bowl. They watch football. Yeah. Like football ratings, basketball ratings gone down. Um, baseball ratings have plummeted. I don't know who watches hockey. I have no idea what's going on with hockey. I think the people that watch hockey always will watch hockey. Yeah, but that that all six of them. Yeah, you know. Um, I think they're losers. But but college football and college football is growing. Um, it you know it's becoming more popular still, and the NFL is still growing. Those are two growing businesses as far as eyeballs are concerned. People still tune in and watch the games. And ESPN um, villainizes the players in their media all day long. Like, I'm not saying they shouldn't make this guy look good or look bad or, you know what I mean, any of that. You know, but it's like, why why, why do you rip a – why – like, you pay billions of dollars to the NFL to show their game – one night a week. You pay billions for, for what, 17 games, 18 games, however many games it is. I don't know what their contract is with them. Billions. You pay billions for the right to use their highlights. You pay billions of dollars for this to paint. Their employees in a bad light. And their employees in a bad light. Um, but I don't know if you're, if you're a sports network, like, why is that content? You know, like. Uh, you know, it, it, I guess it's just selling controversy. I, you know, I don't know. I mean, I mean, to me, it's it's always funny. They they did a show. Oh, what was it called? It was any given Sunday. Any given Sunday, the show. See if you can Google that. The NFL clipped their fucking wings when they did this. This was. I don't think the. I don't think the NFL could clip their wings. Um, the show, not the not the movie, the show. TV series. There it is. It 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 ran one season, and it was so good. Um, no, never mind. This Australian? ain't Australian. No, this ain't it. Um, what? Um, any given Sunday TV show, ESPN might bring it up. I don't know. I don't know. It might not have been called Any Given Sunday. Uh, no. Any given Wednesday. Nope. 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 There was a the the um put uh TV NFL TV show ESPN canceled Playmakers that's it So Playmakers the NFL the NFL said if you're going to if you're going to show how this how this is if you're going to show the NFL in this light um we're not going to let you even be a part of the bidding process to show NFL programs, okay? And they canceled it. I mean, I it I I think it I think it had two or three episodes, maybe. In what light? What was it? What was the controversy? Well, it was about concussions. It was about oh, there you go. partying. It was about womanizing. It was about. It, I mean, it, it was about, about pretty damn good times, you know. Looking back at young 19-year-old Corey loved the show Playmakers for both episodes that I got to watch. I would have tuned in um, for every season that they had. It was like a soap opera with football players. But it was um, – y'all y'all have seen – have y'all seen Any Given Sunday? No? Mm-mm. So Any Given Sunday um, is about players playing hurt and taking drugs to be able to play through it. And getting contracts and the the dynamic of the ownership, the coach and the player, and how it all meshes together. Mm-hmm. And the you know it had uh, Jamie Fox in there as the star quarterback, the new star quarterback. It had some other guys, the old um, going out of business quarterback. 
and it, and it was an interesting dynamic. This was the the TV show that was going to turn that into a never ending um, soap opera for the NFL. But I mean, you know, they're getting strippers pregnant. They're having good times. Um, they're dealing with concussions and injuries and taking drugs to get over it. And and the uh, the NFL said, nope. If you're going to portray us in that light, we're we're not going to um, essentially not, just not do business with. We're you. We're not going to do business with you. And they, they cut them off. And if they did that to ESPN right now over the way they portray, I mean, every single time you watch anything on ESPN right now, they are ripping the NFL shred for shred. There are, there are kids that will never get to play football, Braxton probably being on that list. Braxton, you get to play football? I was not allowed to. Not allowed to play football because of what ESPN put out there about the risk of injuries – for children like Braxton. Do you know how hard it would be for Braxton to get his brain destroyed in youth football? Like, didn't matter. That's all you hear about. It's all you, you hear about. about breaking but, your back or having a Parkinson's or something. Such a small chance of that happening. Such a small chance of that happening, but Braxton never got to experience football, never got to experience playing football because of the risk. Now, does the risk go up for – in college, exponentially. Um, college players deal with a lot of concussions, deal with a lot of brain injuries. They, they it exponentially worse um, in college. And then the NFL has their own set of challenges. NFL, 91. College, 21% of high school football players. That's, that's more than a tiny probability. No, no, no. One Youth in five. Football. Well, you, you did also say exponentially into college. To 91, 21 to 91, 21 yeah, percent still is not good. Twenty one is twenty one to ninety one. Yes. And, and how many of the twenty one of of high school, um, you know, were were college? Like like, let's let's take it down to to size of school. Braxton playing in a one A school versus Braxton playing in a in a five A school. Like the, once the competition, the speed of the game is so much faster. At 5A versus 3A, and and it's the high speed collisions that that um, you know cause the concussions. Now, I don't know if I have CTE. I might have CTE. I had a couple of concussions in high school, um, you know, and and they they didn't have near the safety protocols they have now. What um, is CT? Is that just brain damage from the amount of impacts? Yeah, from concussions. But yes. you know, I I would say that men in general probably get this a lot. I, I I I bet you boxers, I bet you anybody who rides dirt bikes, anybody who, um, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, I, you know, skateboarding. Um, I'll I'll bet you that you get skateboarding a, for sure. MMA. You know, you get enough concussions. You're gonna. I I think men probably have a lot more CTE than than women, but I, to me, they've done enough to. Pretty much, I don't know that they're going to kill the sport. I don't know that the interest will go down. I know you're not a football fan. You know, you're not. The level of fandom that you have in your generation. I'll, I'll sit down and watch it if, if it's on. But I'm not going to go out of my way on my own or something. Yeah. Just not. Yeah, the level of fandom that he has because he didn't he didn't play it. He didn't play the sport, so he didn't fall in love with it. He didn't have any attachment to it. Um, you look at when we go watch Blaze and them play, uh, we used to have four four teams per grade. So seventh grade, seventh grade would field about fifty kids to play football in a in a class of one hundred. You know what I mean? Dang. So you're looking at almost a hundred percent of boys coming out offense and defense to play football. Mm -hmm. No, they would have four teams to to be able to, to be able to to play or or fifty kids in in middle in middle school. Um, so you would have. You would have two teams for seventh grade, two teams for eighth grade, and every single school you would play would have two teams. So okay, you're you you're seventh and eighth grade, um, and then you'd have a full team for freshmen, and then a full JV team, which is basically uh, sophomores. Because once you're once you're juniors and seniors, by the time your junior and senior year rolls around, if you're not any good, if you never did get good, you're not going to hang around. You know what I mean? Because you're not going to get to play. You're you're, mm. you're not just going to come out and be a practice dummy at that point in time. Um, 
but you know by freshman and sophomore year you know you're still trying to get good so you know you still don't know if you're good enough to play varsity or not um now whenever we go watch games there's a ton of freshmen on varsity there's a ton of sophomores on varsity which are probably probably worse for brain injuries because they're younger um not as strong they're not as strong they're not as big um and you might only have a JV team versus a freshman and JV team, and then you're probably only going to have one team for the seventh grade and one team for the eighth grade because uh, not enough boys are coming out, which then, again, increases the number of um, times you're getting hit because who are the practice dummies when you only have 20 guys? Everybody's getting hit every single play of practice. So it's probably got a ton of – you know, the stats are probably only going to get worse. Y'all, huge news. Ready. I, so we talked about them last week. Uh, remember we had a conversation about American Pie and a certain band that was in American Pie? Yes. So Blink is back. Tom's. I don't know if you – I assume, Corey, you were a coming of age during the Blink era. I don't know mm-hmm. if you were a fan or not. But I'm a huge fan. And Tom DeLonge is back – they reunited for the past 10 years. They've been doing blink with just Matt uh, or sorry, Mark uh, Travis and some other dude and they suck. So Tom's back and they're touring and dropping new music. So. Dude, that's cool. I, you know, I always look at it the same way. I think that old bands that break up, there's like, it's like there's an immaturity at that age. And then as they get older, they can either they're mature enough to squash the beef. And so they get back together or they just get broke and they're like, "Hey, we, right? We gotta, we gotta at least pretend for a little while." And I think that's what, um, who was it? Axl Rose, Guns and Roses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think they were just like, "Hey, guys, let's go make some money one more time, and then we can go back to hating each other." Yeah. For for Blink, it was Mark having cancer. I think that really made them be like, "Our beef was petty. It's stupid. We love each other." That's you good. know, he almost died. So yeah, so but, well, amazing. I'd, yeah. There's three things that will that will change uh, human beings that will actually change them. Do you know what they are, Sohill? Uh, uh, Drugs, j- j- hormones. No, no, no. no three, <laughs> three, three, three things that will make a human being change. That will change their behavior, make them change, make them maybe near death experience. Near death experience. Uh, having kids. Nope. No. Uh, Death of a loved one, of a very significant person mm-hmm. in their life. And love. Nope. Drugs. Nope. A big financial something. Hmm. Some, Change. Some, some like, a big, down. very big job loss or win the lottery. Yeah. Big financial event. Those three things are the catalyst to the most change in the human behavior on planet Earth. It's like giving somebody money, give a bad person money. They're just going to get worse. Have you ever encountered any of those three things? Uh, yeah. The job loss, the job loss is what made me, what made me change. It was a big financial, um, problem for me and, uh, and, and made me change, uh, the loss, the significant loss of a loved one, um, happened at a, at a few different points in my life. Um, but, um, made, made, yeah, it made me change. It changed, like, but it wasn't, like, the biggest growth that I had was after those um, two deaths and then uh, the loss of the job, like, put it all in perspective, kind of bought it full circle. Um, the near-death experience will be whenever uh, I'm a deacon at the church <laughs> with Spoon, you know what I mean? <laughs> be in there singing hymnals, um, and I won't be wearing a hat. Spoon Spoon said he's he was worried. He's gonna let it hang out. Yeah, he, he, well, Spoon said he's worried that the deacons at the church are gonna watch this. Remember? Yeah, he's like, you so know, the people at my my church will see this, and he, he thinks they're they're combing the the uh, Roughnecks Real Estate YouTube <laughs> channel. Just, I mean, we stand the deacons, we stand the church. I, I mean, I like I I I am a religious person. I have a I have a great relationship with God. Um, the social construct of church, though, uh, wore me out. Whenever, whenever I was, I, I, all the churches that I were involved with, the um, it's kind of like that that DA that gets to choose how they 
how they prosecute, the pastor gets to choose what they do with that money they collect. And they always seem to choose badly, <laughs> you know? And it just kind of was like, wait a second, why are we going? If the, if the, if the preacher's going to end up cheating on his wife and then running away with the church's money and then we got to start over again? Like, but you went to some pretty good churches. Mm-hmm. Is the preacher still there, the original preacher? Yeah. All, yeah. all the ones I've been around, it's never been anything like that. They either moved to another church or they're still there. Yeah, but when they moved to another church, what circ- what was the circumstances? Like one went uh, up in Chicago to go do more schooling and then be at a church. Yeah, well. So it was, it was a pretty good reason. They always made it seem like a good reason whenever uh, when they were leaving our churches too. I, I never the the first time I ever heard about a financial return was at church. The preacher was talking about. I found a great place where we can get a fourteen percent return. If y'all want more info on it, just see me after the sermon. And I was like, and at that moment I was thinking, wow, that's great. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. what a what a great word. And then like three months later, homie was out of there, and he had to move on to bigger and better things. Every pastor I've had has at least fooled me enough to. No, be pretty I don't, straight. I, I I think I do see like the mega I, churches. They do exist though. What the mega churches? Mm-hmm. You there? There's levels to this. So if you're going to get a billionaire to donate to the church, he's he's going to have billionaire taste. So you're going to have to have the finer things in life to get the billionaire's money from his bank account to your bank account. But then, like, what do you actually do with the money? So like that, the church that Joel Osteen, uh, whenever whenever Harvey flooded, they sh- the internet shamed him into letting people go into the church. Do you remember this? Yes, I think so. Yeah, Joel Osteen locked his church for Harvey, so he locked it, put chains on the doors, boarded up his church to prepare for Harvey. And I don't know, I have no, I I guess part of it's got. You know, it's the old um, Rockets Stadium. It's a it, and I think for years it was the place where people would go for floods, for floods or whatever. But either way, he locked her up. He locked her down. And when the homeless people showed up, then other people showed up. They were like, "What? We can't go. We can't. We can't ride this baby out in a fucking in this storm shelter. This awesome storm shelter. That you know what I mean." And so, the internet ended up shaming him into opening his doors, and he opened it up. Um, and meanwhile, Mattress Mac, do you know who he is? Mm-hmm. He opened up his entire showroom and let everybody just sleep in there on his on his inventory. <laughs> you know what I mean? So he's got brand new couches, brand new furniture, brand new everything else. He's not a preacher. He's not any of that. Just a homeboy. He's just a homie, and he's got people sleeping on his inventory that he's going to have to sell. You know what I mean? At some point down the road, so it's at a discount. <laughs> yeah, because it's completely devalued because it's got, you know. People living in it, you know. It's 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 now basically used furniture. But the um, richest church in in Houston uh, couldn't find it in their hearts to uh, allow um, the 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 poor people in there. Um, I I find that interesting. I find it interesting because to me it's like, you know, their perspective is everything, um, and context matters. So maybe there is a valid reason why Joe Osteen. Locked his church during Harvey, possibly. For sure, yeah, there's got to be. Maybe there's a valid reason, but <laughs> it's also pretty unvalid when <laughs> Mattress Mac showed you just how it was done. You know what I mean? He's like... Are, are you familiar with Kenneth Copeland? I'm not. Oh, he's the other huge mega church pastor. We need to do a deep dive on him. Well, I He's great. These, these guys, I mean, they just kind of left a bad taste in my mouth. I'm like, you, you know, you get to you get to live. They get to live phenomenal lives, and and they've they've done very well, yeah, and they no are. Taxes. Yeah, they get to have a phenomenal life. Um, you know, God is very good to them, um, and and maybe that's why we all need a little more religion in our life. But at, at the same time, mm-hmm. I'm, I don't think my forty seven dollars is going to change um, that mega church. I think I think when it comes time to tithe. Um, I have, I have now been emailed three or four different times by the other uh, children that are raising money for Emory School. They're on to me. They're on to me. So I donated to Emory's thing, and now I'm donated to Madison's thing, and now I'm gonna have to donate to Kimber and Cannon's thing. And I'll imagine that that uh, if Skyland, there'll be an email in there. So I'm gonna have about a thousand dollars donated to the. 
um, whatever school fundraiser this is, which most of that went to Emory's because I kicked that party off strong. You know, I wanted to show my commitment so Braxton couldn't couldn't ever <laughs> point at me and say, well, you didn't even donate. Boy, I donated. So now i got to go donate to all those kids, and hopefully talking about it here, it comes out later. You know what I mean? There's a little bit of delay on how before this comes out, Braxton. So This is live. Oh, well. No, I'm just kidding. You know, they'll Should probably I, hit you up too, Braxton. He's giving the money to the comp. Yeah, it's like, like I don't, I mean, Joel Osteen ain't going to get that money, but H.O. Whitehurst um, reading fundamentals or whatever it is that we've donated to. <laughs> Braxton, how much have you donated to this? I think it was like 60 bucks. So don't, but last year you donated too. Like a, I think it did like 120 last year. So yeah, so Braxton's 200 in on this thing. You know uh-huh. what I mean? That's good. You can hold your head high knowing. I mean, and so it really like, is. I was like four prize points or something, or five. But but you get you get both sides of it. You get to actually donate to a good cause, mm-hmm. and see Emery. She's now won a Nintendo Switch. She's on her way to that PlayStation Five. I mean, we're a weekend in. I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm actually I'm I'm going to force her to make videos, thank you videos, and all that sort of stuff to ask. For the for the business on the next one, I'm gonna say you know make her give a shout out to so and so and thank you for supporting this. Um, if y'all want to go help me out, this is what we're raising money for. Uh, they're trying to build a playground, I think. So, anyways, you can go give to it. But what else you got, Braxton? Anything? We've talked about a lot of weird stuff on this one. We yeah. have. I think kids should play football. I like so for me. I think I was like 12 when Pam was finally gonna let me, despite everything she heard. And then, like, a week later or something, guy at my church wasn't paralyzed, but had a scare. Went off the field in a stretcher, playing high school football. And she's like, yep, nope, that's it. It happens. A uh, kid kid in our school, bad deal, um, broke his leg. And um, I, don't, well, I, don't, I think he did break his leg. I think it was a break. Anyways, tore artery in his leg. Oh, my God. And they didn't they didn't catch it. So he went he went to the hospital. He's bleeding out the whole time. Uh no, he wasn't bleeding out. It it wasn't that kind of deal. He didn't die, but he had to have his leg cut off. It was probably internal. It was internal. Yeah. It was definitely internal. And uh they didn't Jeez. catch it. And um so it like went I wasn't mean, getting that, blood. Yeah, it wasn't getting blood. And uh they had to cut his leg off. I mean and it wasn't like a it wasn't like a long period of time. It wasn't like he broke his it, whatever happened, and then three days later, it was like, whatever went to the hospital. He left the the field, went to the hospital, and the hospital didn't catch it. He went home for like an hour or two hours or something. The pain got too much or whatever, and he went to a bigger hospital in Waco, and they caught it and they had to amputate his leg. So we're not talking about a like a long period of time, but um, it cost him his leg, and then I think they sued the hospital. Maybe he got a little bit of money. Um, but he definitely was a junior in high school and had a, a leg amputee. That's the worst injury I ever heard about. Wasn't so much the injury, mm-hmm. I don't think, as it was the bad medical care over at the Limestone County Medical Facility at that time. Mm-hmm. But um, I think it does. I mean, it does happen, you know. But yeah. I, I can't say one way or another. Like, I wish I would have been able to play, but I also had good experiences elsewhere. So it's like I don't feel like I missed out on anything, you know. Uh, I understand where, as a mom, same reason why she don't want me doing Muay Thai. She's like, I don't want my my baby going to getting punched. Like, no part of me wants that for you. I will not come watch you if you compete. Like, do not do that. Is is it DJ? Should a DJ putting that stink on you? I just that's that's separate. That's like a a different health issue. It is an issue. It is a health issue, but it's a different kind of health issue. Yeah, the kind where the Mustang still kind of it's got that that funk. Yeah, but 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 DJ actually he moves slow, but it does. Well, that, that was the thing when we sparred. We only sparred once, probably do it tonight. Um, like he's he's just kind of funny because it's like I know I've, he's I've, got a slow you I've know box DJ. And but I, when it comes, it comes. I know you're I, like I oh man I like probably should have tried to block. It. I don't want to eat those. I mean I I I box DJ when we were in Vegas. They had a boxing. Um, well, they had a boxing ring and gloves, like real ones. And so we put them on, and I, and I thought I was just going to fucking KO DJ. And after I hit him about four times with all, you know, I landed uh-huh. I landed enough clean shots to finish the bear. 
the bear was still standing there, I was sad. And I didn't want to get hit no more by DJ. <laughs> so I just, luckily we were in a boxing ring, so I just ran around ran around, and, yeah. you know, that was, well, that, that was the issue with me. It's like, we're, we're pretty tight, you know, and, yeah. you know, I would, I would smoke DJ. I would uh, let off if I'm hitting him in the head or something. So it's like, it's annoying to him. I know that, but it ain't much else. <laughs> yeah. He's, you know, DJ's. A, <laughs> but when he would body me, I like, oh. Through my, you know, if I'm if I'm blocking it through my arms, it's like it's got some power behind it. Yeah, it's it's definitely that's fifty pounds heavier. <laughs> it's definitely all there. Um, which I'm glad DJ's working out. I mean, yeah. DJ. I mean, DJ needs to. Needs I've been to, trying to get him in the gym too. He 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 needs to. Is is, is DJ your brother? Or? No, he's a he's a guy with that works with us. Oh, he's about. Okay. 330 pounds. Oh, is he the the one? He's the So he's a whole lot more than 50 pounds on me. He's he's first generation high school kid. Um Braxton's second generation high school kid and Kyler's third generation, but we don't see a lot of Kyler. He's in football right now. Once we get him out of football, we'll start being start running on him, start working with him a little bit. Um we hired we fired a lot of youngsters. Um, to work for us, and DJ's been there. He started for us in 2017. So, see, he the one that leaves shit at the junk, at the at the dump. Mm. Oh, DJ, DJ tears up some shit. <laughs> DJ had a blowout on on Jason's trailer and just went ahead and just drove. It had a spare on it, you know what I mean? But that would have took you <laughs> ten know, minutes. That, yeah, like it, like who's got ten minutes to change a tire? Just drive it. Just. Drive it on the rim all the way to my house. Call yeah. back to the first episode, but maybe he doesn't know how. No, 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 he does. <laughs> DJ does. DJ does know how. DJ uh, has a little bit more of that experience than me. A <laughs> whole yeah. lot more. <laughs> Can we get him on the podcast? Oh, we could get DJ up here. I'd... We should sometime. Yeah. We, with... Different generations. D- uh... Well, DJ is funny, though, because, like, he's like, it's like you tell him something and, and the old processor kicks in, and then he spits something out that's funny. Just a delay. It does take him a second, yeah. It's just a delay, <laughs> like, boop. Like, I right. mean, the other day, Braxton asked him, we're on a group call, and Braxton asked him what his girlfriend was doing later. And uh, he just, there was just this awkward silence on the phone. And then what did he say? He just said something along the lines of, Braxton, just know, whatever you do to her, I'm going to do to you right after. <laughs> Which I thought was a great response. Uh huh. I was like, oh, that'll change. Because he was like, sure, yeah, you know, you can hang out with her, you know, but whatever goes on. <laughs> I mean, DJ will be a great podcast uh, mm-hmm. guest. Um, I don't know. I don't know if we'll get DJ. And he, we'll have to, he'll probably bill us. He'll probably be like, I better yeah, be on yeah. the clock. Yeah, he, he'll just clock in. He'll be like, I was working that day. I was on Corey's podcast. GBT Productions. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Send that bill, bro. <laughs> That's probably what it'll cost. It'll cost us, uh, cost us some DJ time. But yeah, what? Uh, I don't know. I, we, I to me, I want to. Uh, we're gonna start doing other guests. We need. We need to have a different guest in here every time. Maybe we, can we get four people in here? Maybe like a baby. And then, like a ninety-nine-year-old, like, uh, well, person. We can bring. I I can arrange to have the kids up here. We'll just let big. Well, that there's a lot of expensive stuff in here. It's gonna be like a twenty-minute podcast, and the rest is gonna be. <laughs> it, we'll we'll bring them in. No, don't grab that camera. And we'll just toss them down, and we'll see if we can keep them from. Like, eventually, they'll know that everything that they can see here. We we we're, we're gonna stop them from messing with, so they'll disappear behind the curtain, and you'll just hear clanking over there whenever stuff's breaking. Well, I gotta go to Coleman, Braxton. Where you gotta go? Wherever. I, gotta, I wanted to I get you to talk about sales stuff because I heard you yelling at Ryan. Um, oh, what do you? I I do think. Uh, oh, that's what I was thinking about when you were explaining all that. It, it would be such a different business to be in, but I think the business coaching, there's money to be made there. What, you talking about me? Yeah. yeah. Talking about me doing business coaching? Yeah. Yeah. I, because the, the concepts that you're going over was very, very simple. Yeah. But how many people just aren't asking for it? 
I mean, I I do agree. I mean, I I think I think people get um, too too stopped up in business. They they don't realize they they don't realize what a lead is. You know what I mean? So Braxton and I have done business together a lot. So Braxton is my best chance of getting more money into my business in a short amount of time. Mm -hmm. But I might ignore Braxton for months and months and months and months and months going out into the marketplace looking for a new client. And I'm going to have to work on that new client that's not instantly going to see the value. Um, So what within sales or within business, like, we're doing a podcast right now. My, m- we pay Harper Belmont for the podcast. So if you want to learn more about that, reach out to Harper Belmont. I think you can go to harperbelmont.com. But within that, um, they do different things. So they, they, they do our short form content. They post it to the internet. Um, they have a ton of different um, packages and different things that you can do. When Braxton comes in as a guest, okay, when we sit here and chop it up for two hours or whatever, their editors are going to have to go through that two hours of footage and and edit out my short form content. So the closest thing that they can get to a new client is going to be Braxton's short form content. And then they need to have multiple packages for Braxton to pick through, whether or not he wants to post it, doesn't want to post it, only wants 10, wants 20, wants 40 clips. Um, once the whole thing, the whole thing, four minute long clips. Like, so if you have a variety of things for all different price points, because, um, you know, at that moment in time, that revenue, um, that, that you're looking for in business could be sitting right here next to me the entire time, but you let it walk out the door and walk right past you every day. So I was just, um, letting, letting Ryan know that if, when, when I bring in guests that he needs to have a package, he needs to have multiple packages for him to pick from at multiple price points that because different people will value different things. I, I value never having to think about it. I, that's what I value. I don't want to think about it. I don't want to post it. I don't want to hashtag it. I want to go look at it as a whole every three or four days and see how it's doing and then make suggestions on, you know, if we could do better, that's it there's a ton of stuff that's going to come out on our YouTube this next week that I haven't even watched. I'll, I'll probably won't watch it. I mean, I've been watching it because I know that, you know, I want to see what it takes to get better. You know what I mean? But I don't, as far as how, you know, if we start getting hate or love on the internet, I don't care which way it goes. I just want to, you know, the attention is the attention. Um, but yeah, do you, you think we should do business coaching? Just drive revenue, just for outside ideas. Yeah. I, I mean, it's like, um, I think I, I got the, uh, what's old Jocko Willink or whatever. Yeah. I I, I mean, it's kind of what they do. They'll just go into businesses. They'll kind of, not interview, but just analyze each department head and, and go in and figure out all the nuances of it and figure out where they can improve. I think, I mean, that's just the concept. It's just looking at something and, and figuring out how can you make it better outside fresh eyes on it, figure out how to close more of those leads. Yeah. And uh, well, we, I think we could do a good job in real estate, mm-hmm. like little wholesaling businesses. There aren't really businesses. That well, that's just even marketing training. Well, marketing training, but like, I mean, everything, I mean, it's, there's, there's an opportunity there. Did mm-hmm. we finally get one to play? No. So I have one point. Uh, we'll see. But I wanted to get, we we're talking about your content. Let's talk about this. Yeah, this is really good. Spoon's eyes look really good in that picture right there, you know? I'm frustrated. Hold on. need that. that. We don't have enough but, internet. It's okay. But yeah, it's like, I think it might be harder if it's a different, you know. Sales are sales. That, that's, I mean, that's the thing. It's like, if you can, it's just going to be detecting and identifying yeah, where that's, that's going to be. But I think the principle is still the same. Well, and, and everyone's in sales. What y'all see coming through though, is that is, um, you know, 150 books. That's all it is. It's 150 books. It's a few thousand hours of content consumed. Um, that makes it easier for me when we're in our Monday meeting. Mm-hmm. That's all you see happening. It's like like when when I'm looking at property management, 
I see this person, like what I broke out for Paul. Were you there when I broke it out yes. for Paul? It's like, uh, I mean, that's just what I see. I'm just like, this seems like the human we would need, and they could solve other problems virtually for us if they wanted to earn extra money, mm -hmm. right? They could do making a base course. function with the opportunity for more. With the opportunity for more, if you want to make more money, but you got to be able to. Like it's like like if you were first baseman, you got to be able to play first base. You you just got to be great at first base. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But if you can learn to play second, we'll we'll and throw you, need you in, two in a bind. Yeah, we'll we'll throw you in second, in, in in when we need that. You know what I mean? It's just that's the way I yeah. saw that. And so tomorrow, that's why I'm going to Coleman. I'm going out there to to interview that person to see. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like I I don't want to put that evil on Jacob to figure that out. You know, I want to go look at that person. I want to see what they are. I always saw it as more of a maintenance role, somebody that can do a lot of the maintenance issues, right? Um, but maintenance isn't our pain point in a lot of those areas. Leasing is right now. So if By I, if opening I'd up say, to limited responsibilities, you're not limiting the type of person that can do it then. Yeah, well, we're having more leasing issues as far as follow-up and everything else that goes with leasing, uh, having – those people in those areas that can do leasing, like in Coleman and Comanche, you could almost have one in Coleman that can do leasing and one in Comanche that can do maintenance and they can help each other out. Mm -hmm. So what you got, uh, what you got, what you got? I anything? just wanted it. Can we talk about this thumbnail? <laughs> this thumbnail, the stealing a ball from a kid, yeah. dude, it's doing well. Like it, <laughs> I don't know where those 600 views came from other than it's good, clean content. I mean, we, we put it out there. We, we, we put it out there so people would know what's going on. You know what I mean? But it did it way, way better than every other video. I mean, I've shared other videos and they haven't gotten 600 views. What do you think about it, Braxton? I don't understand how content works. Me either. You should subscribe, like, comment the different generations podcast.